Welcome back to Let's Play Zelda 2 The Adventure of Link. So last time we got the hammer and the second magic container, and I can now safely say that I have officially drank too much coffee. I don't think I've ever said that before in my life. But basically the reason that I, I believe that is because my stomach is now upset and I've had many cups of coffee. This is actually my fourth cup of coffee. Um, I had one... It's still the same recording session, so it's like 9.30 in the morning right now, right? Well, I had one cup of coffee, uh, when Psychotic Ranbu was streaming. So, because he was streaming, you know, in Mountain Time, and, uh, that's two hours behind where I am, so... This was at, like, 2 o'clock in the morning, and I wanted to stay up for the, for the whole stream, because it was a really good time. Um, so that was my first cup of coffee, and then I brewed a second cup of coffee after that stream ended. And then I went out to Starbucks at the Meyer, and I don't normally like Starbucks coffee, like, I'm not a big fan of it, but I, um, I, I felt like I needed more coffee then, so that was my third cup of coffee. Plus I figured, you know, I hadn't eaten anything, so I got a scone there too, and it's like, you know, it's all, it's okay. For me, Starbucks coffee is kind of like last resort coffee. Like, if there's nothing else around, Starbucks is okay because it's the, um, you know, it's, it's better than all of the other terrible coffee out there. You know what I mean? So anyway, I had that, and then um, I went out for breakfast with my dad, and he got me another cup of coffee while I was at the grocery store getting milk. So, yeah. Oh, God, we got one of these guys out here in the daylight, and they certainly look funny in the daylight. Now, one strategy that you can actually use on that bridge is to get hit by the bubbles, because the bubbles will give you some frames of invincibility, and, um, and they don't do much damage to you, so... If you find yourself taking lots of damage on that one particular screen, that is one thing you can do. And we just picked up another one up, so now we actually have five lives, which is pretty awesome. It says four on the on the like the screen, but it's one of those games where like I called this the zero life when I was a kid, like when I was playing Mega Man X4, and I sucked because I didn't know how to play Mega Man at all. Um, oh fairy, please come at me, <laughs> oh, fairy! Why have you forsaken me? But yeah, when I when I sucked at Mega Man X4. Like, that game starts you with three lives, right? So I would die twice, and then it would say I had zero lives. So I called that the zero life when I was a kid. I don't know, that's something, like, really, really dumb. And my, that is a popular combination of enemies. These blue Gorias do a lot more damage than I thought they did. But that's okay, because we're actually just about to pick up... The second heart container! So yeah, you usually end up picking up the, um the heart containers and the magic containers are relatively close to each other. With the exception of the next one, you get the third magic container considerably before you get the third heart container. You get the, um, basically, you, there's a palace in between them. But anyway, so that's, um, one thing that you can do now that you have the hammer. Now what I could do is go into the next town and get a special sword technique called the Downward Thrust, but I'm actually going to basically save myself an extra trip and get the item that I need to get before I go to the town. Because you need to recover another item to learn the magic in that particular town, so... And it just happens to be right here. And of course, I just so happen to run into the one non-fairy encounter, because that's the only way it would work, right? That's okay. I find that Octoroks continue to give, like, decent-ish experience throughout the game. Even though it's only ten, but they get so easy to kill, you know what I mean? Now, I am really not a fan of this encounter screen. Uh, I want that! I want that! Thank you! Thank you very much. But yeah, I really, really, really hate these fish. <laughs> a lot! These, like, bonefish guys. I think they are incredibly annoying. They're one of my least favorite enemies in the game. So I'm actually going to cast shield on the screen because we got some more red guys to deal with. There's actually two of them in this room, which can potentially be pretty deadly. Why is Link not swinging his sword when I press the B button? <laughs> Jeez, man. I'm trying to jump and, like, swing at the same time. Or close, I guess that- Wow! Oh my god, this is so many pee bags, man. So many pee bags. 
I don't know, I find that I have pretty good luck with these red guys. I don't think they're quite that hard. So, that's okay. It's funny, because I've actually fallen in that tiny little lava pit before. And this item that we picked up is actually called the Medicine of Life, which some old person needs for some reason. <laughs> Gotta give it to King Zora, like in uh, freaking Oracle of Ages, right? Yeah, unfortunately, the Medicine of Life won't bring you back to life if you die, so... That's it. Uh, please don't hit me. Thank you. Well, jeez, man, you had to hit me anyway. Jeez, that's just so dumb. So dumb, man. So yeah, the next town actually is kind of... I don't know, it's funny, because it's not the name of a sage, but it is the name of somebody else in Ocarina of Time. And I guess I never really paid attention to it the first time I played this game, because, you know, I forget about town names and stuff like that, especially when all the towns in this game look the same, basically, except with some different variations. I think this is a kind of an alright town, though, because it's supposed to be all beachy. Anyway, this is the harbor town of, yeah, Bido. That annoying asshole who blocks the way to the great Deku tree because you would stop talking to the old lady, man. I'm trying to get healed. Wow. But yeah, that asshole who blocks the path to the tree. So you can just visit these buildings. There's a dude there. Looks all like bent over, hunched, hunched over. He's the hunchback. Man, actually, that's not funny. I shouldn't joke about that. So anyway, you cast jump here on this screen and you can actually get all the way up here. Which, I, I don't know, this is like, kind of a church-looking building, I guess, because it's got the big cross on it. I don't know if people actually know this about Zelda, but before A Link to the Past, Christianity was intended to be the main religion of Hyrule. Yeah, press downward to stab. So this is the down thrust. There's the down thrust, the up thrust, the gun thrust, you know. Anyway. But yeah, Christianity was supposed to be the main religion of Hyrule, and that's the reason why there's, like, the graveyards all have crosses on them, or, like, the, the tombstones have crosses, and the, um, and the shield in Zelda 1 has a cross on it, and the wizardobes in this game actually have crosses on their faces, which is kind of weird. We'll be seeing them at a couple dungeons from now. They start showing up in Dungeon 4, and then they get to be a real pain in the ass by the time you get to the sixth dungeon. But anyway, whatever you do, do not get an encounter on the graveyard. If you get an encounter on the graveyard, you are going to be very, very sorry. Dude, just freaking just stop getting... Would you look at that? That was just the dumbest thing ever. The sandworms are really more of an annoyance than anything. So, get out of here, rocks. I don't even know why there are rocks flying across the screen in the desert anyway. So, this is a kind of a weird space, but this is King's Tomb, no apostrophe. It's just kind of a safe square, but anyway, you go south from King's Tomb and you'll fall down a hole. Fall down some random grave hole. You can actually downward thrust these guys. The downward thrust is, like, by far the most useful move, like, in the entire game. I forgot to get the fairy spell, because I'm an idiot. Oh my god. But basically, the whole point is that you need the fairy spell to get into the third dungeon. Because there's a cliff that's too high for you to jump with the jump spell. Which I think is just kind of weird and dumb. But anyway, I don't know. I kind of did. I don't like starting dungeons in the middle of episodes. I don't know why, I just don't. Um. But yeah. So where's this person we need to give this to? So I guess it's okay if the the runtime gets padded out. Now I don't know if you noticed out on the screen, but there's actually like a little dock next to the city, or like maybe like a knight's move away from the city, like two down and one to the side. Um, and that's actually actually how you get to the next like major continent in in the game. The second of half of the game is actually takes place in an entirely different map, so. And then you you basically never come back here after you after you beat the third palace. So so get everything you need here while you still can while you still want to. Yeah, this magic word will give you power, and it just so happens to be fairy. So yeah, fairy is a rather expensive spell. And the cool thing about the fairy spell, or maybe I don't know, if you're speed running, it's cool. If you're like me, I don't I don't know I don't really think it's that great. 
Sometimes it's nice to just fly over all of your enemies and, like, basically skip a hard screen, but... But the cool thing about Fairy is that you can actually fly through keyholes in locked doors. So, I don't know, by the time you get to the sixth palace, it becomes totally irrelevant because you get a key that opens all doors in this game, just like you did in Zelda 1, so... Whatever. Oh, more sandworms. I am sick and tired of fighting these freaking sand... I have had it with these motherfucking sandworms. <laughs> taking damage. I'm just taking... I'm just being careless now, because I just want to get into the next dungeon. And I know it's going to give me a freaking magic refill, so... I'll take it, and I'll cast life, and I'll go back into the dungeon with full health anyway, so... But anyway, so let's see what the fairy spell looks like. I don't know why I picked that up. I didn't need it. Yeah, you just turn into a fairy, and you can float up, you can float down. What's kind of annoying about the Sixth Palace is that, as you saw, that spell takes a lot of magic to cast. And at the end of the Sixth Palace, you actually need enough magic to be able to cast the fairy twice in a row. So, I don't know. It's it's not fun. Wow, I am being really, really careless today. Can, can I cast... Oh, I guess I can cast life. I guess I've reached that part of the... Uh, part of the game when the uh, life spell casts 50, so... And there's my magic refill. So I'll cast life again, and then I'll claim another magic refill, and then next time on Let's Play Zelda 2, we're linked to the... No, not... Ah! What are you doing here? Oh my god. You know what? I'm gonna kill you anyway, just because you're a good experience. Yeah, 100 experience. That's nice. Start with... Wow, we're actually almost already at the next level. Uh, life? Wow, that took, like, all of my magic. So yeah, next time on Let's Play Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, we are going to go through the third palace. I will see you then. Bye.